Dana Point is probably one of the most underrated beach cities in Orange County, California. Sandwiched between Laguna Beach to the north and San Clemente to the south, the coastline stretches nearly seven miles along the Pacific Ocean and is home to some excellent beaches and the second largest harbor in Orange County. Just above most beaches, you'll find spectacular cliffside views of the coast. There are several beautiful hotels in the area to choose from and a wide variety of good bar and restaurant choices, just minutes, if not steps away. So sit back and grab some snacks as I take you through this beautiful coastal city known as Dana Point. With a population just over 33,000 and less than seven square miles of land, Dana Point is only half the size of her southern neighbor, San Clemente, which I just did a video on, so be sure to check that out. I'll leave a link below and at the end of this video. Dana Point is approximately halfway between Los Angeles and San Diego, with both big cities being about 60 miles away. The Pacific Coast Highway runs right through the heart of Dana Point, and almost everything branches off and can be accessed from there. The weather in Dana Point is a coastal desert climate, which means warm and comfortable almost year round, but can get quite cool for a couple months in the winter. Just above Dana Point Harbor is one of the best scenic trails in all of Orange County. The views are amazing and you'll end up filling your entire camera roll with pictures from every angle. In fact, this is probably one of the most popular places in Orange County to take graduation, family, or wedding photos. Parts of several movies have been filmed here and the one that always comes to mind is Savages with John Travolta. Parking is free because you'll be parking in a residential neighborhood. Keep walking south after the Bluff Top Trail and you'll end up at Doris Walker Overlook and Heritage Park. Home to approximately 2,400 boats, the Dana Point Harbor is the second largest harbor in Orange County and is the premier attraction in this area. Even though Dana Point is one of the smallest coastal cities in Orange County, the harbor adds so much to the area that there is more to do and see here than most of the surrounding cities. Primo fishing spots peppered throughout the harbor are plenty. This makes Dana Point Harbor one of the best places to fish in Southern California. The protected harbor also brings in other marine life, like these sea lions that love to sunbathe at different spots around the harbor. The best place to watch some of these sea lions is at the southernmost point of the harbor. Just look for the Betty Boop sitting on top of the red and white elephant and walk down to the dock right behind the Orange County Harbor Patrol building. Dana Point was trademarked as the dolphin and whale watching capital of the world. Several deep sea fishing and whale watching charters leave from this harbor multiple times a day. However, you are not guaranteed to catch anything or see any whales. But in my experience, most of the time you will at least see some dolphins. A good day trip from Dana Point is to catch the Catalina Express over to Catalina Island for the day and do some exploring. The Express makes two trips per day and one adult round trip ticket will set you back $81. Located at the northern end of the harbor is Dana Cove and Cove Park. This area is very popular not only with adults but families with small kids because of the great amenities and Baby Beach. Baby Beach is the best family beach around because of the calm, shallow, protected waters and insulated shoreline provided by the harbor and break wall. Kayakers and paddleboarders flock to this area because of the beautiful surroundings and protected waterways. You can rent all of your gear here on the dock right next to the beach. Most weekends this beach will be packed, so you need to get here before 10 a.m. if you want to snag a good spot near the beach. If you're not into the parking wars, Dana Point also offers a free trolley that runs all over the city from the end of May until the beginning of September. Just below the scenic overlook that has panoramic views of the harbor and tucked along the steep cliffs is the Ocean Institute for Kids. This is a hands-on marine science facility for environmental education. If you head out past the Ocean Institute, you can explore the rocky coastline that is exposed during low tide. The break wall can be accessed here as well and you can walk all the way across it if you want. Every year in March since 1971, the Festival of Wales is held down by the harbor. After the parade, you can walk among the old classic cars and vendors set up along the harbor. There's even a free daytime concert put on by a local cover band at Baby Beach. 
With the beer garden and live music, halfway into the show, people start to get loose and let their hair down. A small 29-room, three-star boutique hotel, known as the Blue Lantern Inn, sits at the top of the bluff overlooking Baby Beach and the harbor. Everything from shopping, restaurants, and beaches are all within a two-mile walk or bike ride. This is the perfect place to stay if you're looking for more of an intimate bed and breakfast style getaway. At the southern end of the harbor is where you can find all of the shopping and a handful of dining options. If you're into seafood, there are several restaurants to choose from, but Jimmy's famous American Tavern across the street is my favorite place and has a great happy hour. You can get a big juicy cheeseburger and fries for just 10 bucks. Select cocktails and beers are also marked down. The Lantern District, a small neighborhood that underwent major renovations in 2014, contains several other high quality bars and restaurants. My favorite place for brunch is Stillwater Spirits and Sounds. The food won't blow you away, although it's better than average. But the $18 bottomless mimosas will keep you coming back. The atmosphere is great, and if you can make it to sundown, they have decent live music. If you're a fan of fish tacos or love a good burger, then the Schwack Beach Grill is a great spot to scratch that itch. The one-of-a-kind potato wedges are a must-have with every order. Crispy on the outside and soft on the inside, when they're dunked in the homemade ranch dressing, this completes the texture and flavor bomb. In the heart of Dana Point, just south of the harbor, sits a 62-acre prime chunk of coastal land. This oceanfront property was donated to the state of California by a rich oil tycoon named Edward Doheny back in 1931. Today, this beautiful piece of land is visited by almost a million people a year and is known as Doheny State Beach. Doheny State Beach was actually the first state beach in California. Even though most people from outside of the area have never heard of Doheny Beach, it's actually mentioned in several famous songs like Surfin' USA and Surfin' Safari by the Beach Boys, just to name a few. In fact, this beach is known as one of the best surfing beaches, especially for beginners. Tohini State Beach Park has a load of great amenities, including five acres of nothing but grass and picnic tables. Twice a day when the tide goes out, there will be tide pools to explore on the northern end closest to the harbor. Wheel Fun Rentals, located next to the concession stand, has just about everything you need for a good day at the beach. At the southern end, just past the volleyball nets and the lifeguard building, is a six mile long San Juan Creek bike trail. Going from there across the Santa Ana Spillway, you'll find the Doheny State Beach Campground that has 121 campsites, 33 of which are premium, meaning oceanfront on the beach. And every campsite has a picnic table and fire ring. If you exit the beach park and drive up the hill, you will run into one of the best hotels in the area, the Marriott at Laguna Cliffs. It's a very pretty hotel with good views and the grounds are nice and well kept. Just across the street from the Marriott is Lantern Bay Park that overlooks the southern end of the harbor and some of Doheny Beach. It's a great place for picnics and there's a nice little playground at the southern end. Doheny Beach is top tier and has a little something for everyone. The Salt Creek Beach Park is located in the small wealthy neighborhood of Monarch Beach. In fact, Magic Johnson owns a home in the connected neighborhood, at least he used to. There are two upscale hotels within walking distance from the beach park. The Ritz Carlton sits on the cliff just above the south side and looks down on the almost mile long beach. The Waldorf Astoria Resort is northeast of the parking lot just inland from the Pacific Coast Highway. The beautiful Monarch Beach Golf Course runs all throughout the neighborhood and even has a couple of holes along the beach. Part of the 1966 surf documentary The Endless Summer was filmed here and to this day remains a popular surf spot because of the smooth, tasty waves that form off the outer reef. The only downside to this beach is the long, steep walk to the bottom and back up. But there's a golf cart shuttle that runs during the busy hours, so you can jump on that if you're too tired or lazy. What makes any beach park great is the amount of amenities available, and this one has just about all of them. The Hillside Park is very popular for family gatherings and picnics, especially around sunset. On most days in the summer, especially the weekends, this place will be packed. 
so if you want to snag a decent spot on the beach or at the park, you need to arrive before 10 a.m. And that's typically true for most California beaches. The five mile Salt Creek Trail runs alongside and through the bottom of the golf course and beach park. And this is one of the better bike trails in the area. The food here is your typical snack bar food, being burgers, dogs, tacos, and nachos. However, they do have some decent acai bowls. Just around the corner is Strands Beach, which also sits at the bottom of a long staircase and paved trail. There's a sideways elevator that runs people up and down, but it's slow and never seems to be working. Part of this beach can be pretty rocky, but there are some nice tide pools that form when the tide goes out. Even though Strands Beach is one of the least crowded and probably the least popular of all the beaches in Dana Point, it's still a wonderful asset overall to the city.